In my last video, I roasted a wonderful San Lorenzo Bolivian coffee, a coffee that was over a year old that I've had laying around. I created a custom roast profile using the Bingo Cubex. I roasted it fully manually on this roaster. Because the coffee was older, the roast went a little faster than I had planned. And so it started to take off on me. You can see that here, as we're looking at the profile, I can take this cursor and go across the profile and this acts as my roast log. This gives me the ability to look at every second of the timeline of this roast and look at my temperatures, my power settings. Take a look at this section here and on the left you'll see the environmental temperature, the bean temperature and the rate of rise. They're all changing as I move the cursor through the timeline. Same thing with my heat and my fan settings. You can see that my heat and fan settings are also being recorded here on this roast. And that's wonderful because I can examine what my heat settings were, my fan settings, and my where I was in the timeline, and I can make corrections. And so that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna start in the auto mode with this exact same coffee, and I'm gonna try to get this coffee to roast exactly how I wanted it originally with a four minute and 30 second dry phase, a three minute and 30 second middle phase, and a one minute and 10 second development. I did the dry and I did the development. I did that well on my last roast, but I landed about 22 seconds or so earlier than I wanted to on my middle phase time. And that can influence how the coffee tastes. How much time we take to get to first crack is gonna influence how the coffee is gonna taste. How much time in development we devote is going to influence how that coffee balances out and how that coffee is gonna taste. And how dark we take the coffee, the color of the coffee, will also influence what we taste in the cup. And so today I want to have this coffee a degree or two less and I want that middle phase to be a little bit longer and I wanna see how this coffee is gonna taste. In my last video, it tasted wonderful. It was the best roast that I ever did with uh, that San Lorenzo Bolivian coffee on any of the roasting machines that I used. There was always kind of a dirty note and I could never get the profile exactly how I wanted it to. It was a very difficult coffee to roast. And here, the Bingo Cube roasted this, and because the coffee's older, it moved quicker. I didn't follow the roast profile exactly how I had planned, but the coffee ended up tasting amazing. But I wanna follow through with this roast, and I wanna see what happens if I get that three minute and 30 second Maillard, and that slightly lower bean temperature for my drop temperature. So let's get going, let's do this, and I'm gonna show you how I do this during the roast. We're gonna start out in the auto mode, and then we're gonna end up in the manual mode, and so this is kind of a hybrid roast. It's not a fully auto and or fully manual, it's kind of a hybrid of both, and let's get started. Okay, we've got a stable roasting environment, and we're getting ready to roast three. 100 grams of this San Lorenzo Bolivian coffee. And we're gonna charge. Beans are in the roaster. Okay, so if you take a look at the graph, you'll notice that the bean temperature was within one degree of where we started. It looks like it was about one degree lower, 186 C rather than 187 and the environmental temperature was exactly the same. So the roaster is going to do all that it can within its power, literally, to manage the power to keep the green line, the bean temperature, right on the same line with this roast that it's following. So here we are, we're just a shade under the turning point as we approach it and we think our it was a 73 c at 103 it looks like we're going to be at a 72 or a 71 c here at around one minute and three or four seconds here we go 72 c at one minute okay so it's pretty close it's not exact 
and the roaster is making adjustments. You can look down in the lower portion of the profile and see that the power has been lowered to compensate, to bring the beam temperature exactly onto the line. And it's going to continue to do this. Our plan is to take control of the roaster and make changes. So we're using the profile that we started with to get us to a point in the roast where we want to make our power changes so that we can get that extra 30 seconds of Maillard here, this middle phase, on our timeline. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to make a power adjustment at four minutes. We're at two minutes and six seconds. And at four minutes, we'll go ahead and we'll lower the power to 55. I've made some little notes here of what I wanna do based on the changes that we just talked about a minute ago. And that's what I'm following. If you take a look at the graph, you'll see that the rate of rise is very close to where it was in our previous roast. Our bean temperature is spot on and our environmental temperature at this point in the roast is almost exactly on the line that it needs to be. Okay, we are at two minutes and we're almost three minutes and we're gonna let this ride for another minute and then we're gonna make our power adjustment. This is really the way for you to do a roast get close to where you want it to be, and then notice, well, gosh, the coffee is, isn't as sweet as I wanted, or it's too acidic. And from there you make changes to the amount of time that the coffee is roasting in, say, the middle phase or in development, and that will change the way the coffee tastes. Three and a half minutes, we are right on track here with our bean temperature, we're down maybe a half a degree below the timeline. Our ET, environmental temperature, is right on, and our rate of rise is pretty close to where, where it needs to be. And I have a feeling we're probably around 85 on our power. We're at 80 on our power right now. Um, and we're gonna be going to 55 here in five seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that change to 55 and then hit done and then 55 appears on the timeline. What this is gonna do is it's going to lower our temperature increase. The power has been lowered, so now the speed of the roast, the, the speed of the rate increase is going to lower and that is going to be our um, rate of rise line that we see here on the timeline. Right now, it's following the exact same timeline as before at four minutes and 33 seconds. The coffee looks to be yellow, and so I'm gonna mark it yellow. Here we go, and this is really close to where we were before within a degree or so and a few seconds on the timeline. All right, and our rate of temperature at five minutes. Uh, I am going to, you can see our rate of rise has gone lower. That's really good news. I'm gonna lower it to 50 right now. And this is gonna get our rate of temperature increase lower and slow the roast down. And I'm gonna pay attention to that because I wanna be sure I get that extra 30 seconds and I have a feeling that I'm gonna to need to make some adjustments to continue that trend, but we'll see. This is all part of experimenting with our roast. Yeah, we are definitely staying below the trend, but it's maybe not quite where I want it to be, so I'm gonna to go to 45. I wanna get it a little lower. And I was gonna make this jump to 45 at six minutes, but I did it about 10 seconds earlier. And then our next jump is gonna be at closer to eight minutes. And I think I want to see how this previous roast, it trended upward. The same thing's gonna happen. So I'm gonna to lower to 40 now. Earlier than anticipated and our temperature is 178. 
See how it's still wanting to trend up slightly? Uh, but we're definitely in a safe zone right now. We're much better placed than we were uh, before coming into first crack. Four, five, six, seven, forty-one. Uh, so in another minute, we would have hit first crack, but I want to get this down to, yeah, we're definitely in a safer place. There's trending upward a little bit, so I'm going to go down to 30 now. And this is where I need to be careful because I'm starting to lose momentum, and this is where a lot of people fail and the roast stalls, and I don't want to do that but I'm trying to avoid the first crack flick, which is that upward trend. And it looks like I've made it. Uh, there's where our first crack flick is starting. We can already see there's two cracks that have registered on the roaster. And I wanna be just a little lower on my rate of rise. So we are trending down, that's good news. And we're at 191. I'm not going to auto detect. I'm not going to auto detect first crack because we haven't. I'm waiting for more cracks. This is. I want to be consistent. I think we were at about 11 cracks before when we called first crack. And I'm listening. There's 11. I'm calling first crack now. All right. And this is where I don't want to crash, but I want a downward trend. So I'm going to go to 20. Very nice. We are definitely, I'm trying to get lower on my temperatures right now. I don't want an auto stop at one at 201, but I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna go down to 10% here. You can see we're still trending downward. I wanna get my time in on development. 928 is what I want on development. I'm not going to do an auto stop. Uh, I'm going to do an auto stop when the door opens. I am at 200 degrees. I'm going up to 25%. So this is where you, I'm trying to avoid a crash. And I'm recovering. Okay, so 9.30... 850, let's see, 828, 928. So there's my minute and 10 seconds. And I am going to drop the coffee now. All right. All right, so we have a 261.1 weight for our roasted coffee here. So we're at 12.96 compared to 11. Point, what did I say? It was 5.3. We have a, a higher weight loss percentage here on this roast than we did on the previous roast, even though we dropped at one degree lower temperature. And that's what I'm talking about with this roast time and development. So this is another way for you to experiment. Changing your total roast time can affect your development uh, of this coffee, not just the development from first crack to the end, but the amount of moisture that's being taken out of the bean all the way throughout the roast. So 12.96, this tells me that the roast is likely darker. I haven't taken a close look at the beans yet, uh, but doing so, and taking a look at these beans, they definitely look a little bit darker and I'll get a close up here for you to look at. There is still some nice texture on the beans. And I think the best thing we can do is we can put this under the roast analyzer um, and see the roast color compared to the previous roast. So here are the beans. 
we would take this out, put the beans in measurement, and we want roast level. Fifty five point one puts this into a medium and we were a medium light before. The coffee has had a chance to rest for six days. It's very syrupy smelling like a maple syrup sweetness with a vanilla extract. That's what I'm smelling in this. It's definitely different than my previous roast. It was there was some sweetness that I was able to smell. The aroma goes right into the taste on this. A very sweet coffee that has a vanilla note in it. And I am getting kind of a little bit of a tinge of a uh, fizzy note. And I think that's the ginger that I experienced in my previous video. But that's definitely been tamed down. I'm sensing that more on the front of my tongue now rather than on the back of my tongue. I think that's the acidity. So the acidity is low. There is a gentle juiciness in my previous video with the uh, shorter middle phase time. It was much more juicy. But this is a very pleasant coffee. The body is heavier. And th these differences are because the middle phase was stretched out 40 seconds. That's the difference and that's how you can change the way your coffee, the body is, and some of the sweetness. Sometimes if I do it too much, it's at the cost of some of the very clear uh, acidic notes that I really would like to keep. So when you stretch out that middle phase, there's a higher chance you're going to get a little bit less definition in some of the acidity and it definitely will change in the way that it tastes. This is a great cup of coffee, but in my preference, it uh, the previous roast is the winner by far. And I'm going to be able to repeat that roast in the auto mode here on this Bingo Cube X. I'm really excited about that because I've got more of this San Lorenzo Bolivian coffee to enjoy. Will I try to do something different with this coffee? I don't think so. I think I've been pushing my luck. It's been a very difficult coffee to roast and I'm so happy that I've been able to get some good coffee uh, out of this. I finally found the profile that worked best. Here with the Bean Gold Cube, it was fairly easy to do. The uh, working with the software has been a real joy and more importantly, being able to look and analyze my roasts with this real-time graphical data logging data showing right in front of me with the swoop of my finger is pretty nice. I really enjoy that too. So I'm um, very pleased with what I've had experienced so far with the Bingo Cube X. And thank you to the manufacturer for sending me that roaster so I can share my experiences with you. Development is taking place during this middle phase and it's taking place during the time from after first crack. The coffee is developing, it's changing, reactions are taking place, and the time to first crack makes a big difference. So I would encourage you to experiment with how long it takes for you to get the first crack and see if you can taste the difference. All things else being the same, that is gonna change the way your coffee tastes, and I would love to hear your thoughts about that. So thanks for joining me today. I appreciate you being here. Share your comments, give me a thumbs up, Subscribe to my channel, that's always very helpful. And I hope you have a great week roasting. We'll see you next time. Take care.